And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest chit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us straight from Serial Games, the... The most holest of grain, the most holest of grain studios, and cr and creators of the pixel noir game known as Picaminosa, the one and only Lazro Raposo. How are we doing today, man? I'm fine. And you? I'm do I'm doing good. Just counting the days until win until winter arrives, because as much as winter is coming has become a meme thanks to Game of Thrones. It's not a meme where I live. It's a fact of life. No, uh, luckily for for me, we live in a tropical uh, island. I'm kidding, not tropical, <laughs> subtropical. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if I could do it. Too much sun. Right now it's raining, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that well that's be well that's because Mother Nature is on drugs. Yeah. So if that's uh, the case, uh, Mother Nature is on drugs every day in the Azores. Because in the, in the in a single day, we can get a sunny day and uh, uh, a rainy day. In a minute, in a question of a uh, matter of minutes, for example. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. So, I'd like to open up with the, hum with the um, humble beginnings. Um, how did you first get introduced to gaming and wa and walk me through um, the chain of events that led you to want to become a developer? I don't know. I guess it's uh, it was uh, lots of different moments along my uh, my childhood uh, since the the times uh, the time I spent with uh, the Mega Drive mm -hmm. to. Uh, to later when I went to university and I uh, was studying uh, computer sciences, uh, and uh, it makes some makes some uh, sense to me that uh, a guy that played uh, for a long time and uh, knows how to create games. Uh, uh, I, d I don't know. I think this uh, this was the most logical to do mm -hmm. I had the tools to do it at least I can I can get that now that now that brings me to the to the other half to the other half of the equation when it came when it comes to it so as we as I mentioned at the top of it um Picaminosa is a pic is a pixel noir game that's that's part that's part of its subtitle um, exactly how did you first get intro how did you first get introduced to the concept of film noir and in your opinion what is the appeal of that genre good question um what's the appeal of the noir genre i don't think it's it has uh, an appeal but there's a lot of different things that uh, make um, made me at the time to look at it as with a great potential to to create a game uh, uh, from the 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 noir uh, atmosphere, mm -hmm. uh, the dense plots of or usually the dense plots of the of the movies, um, the soundtracks. The soundtracks are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a huge jazz uh, fan. Mm -hmm. um, and also, there's a lot of 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 cliches like the 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 the, dr the drunken um, the drunken um, detective or la femme fatale. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all of these ingredients somehow they they appear in all uh, all the noir movies, but all noir movies are different, mm -hmm. despite using all the same every uh, all the same. Uh, Ingredients. I don't know. Maybe the 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 pacing of telling the the, the stories. For example, 
for me, Orson Welles uh, it's, is the best um, noir direct, director. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Touch of Evil was a, a huge uh, influence for, for Caminoza, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's all the, those things that make me uh, like it. Which is inter is interesting to me, since um, no there noir even no even a genre like noir has has its own has its own um variances. Um, in the same, like you br you brought up a touch of evil, but I but I've also heard st stuff like the thin stuff like the Thin Man or the or the works of Philip Marlowe also get brought up in the conversation. Um, or or even even the um, post-war cynicism, since a lot of film noir came came around after the First World War. Um, but in but within within the, within that setup, um, a lot of a lot of times when I've seen um, film noir leaning games. Um, pr crop up. They've they've been in the they've been in the realm of adventure games. Um, the big the big example, of course, being Grim Fandango. But Grim Fandango. But you guys went in the realm of a of a action RPG. What what made what um, was the decision to go that route? Behind that, okay. Um, it was easy. Uh, this is easy to explain. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of RPGs. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite games uh, in United States, you call it. It was for Mega Drive. You mm -hmm. call it, I guess, a, a Crusader of Santi. The mm -hmm. the European European version um, was called uh, Soleil. Mm -hmm. For you, is Crusader of Santi. Crusader of Santi was the Saga um, version of Zelda. Mm -hmm. At the time for Nintendo, um, and uh, it, even Zelda: Link to the Past. Uh, th those two games, uh, those two are one of uh, two of my favorite uh, games. Uh, I also like uh, uh, um, f the the Fallout series, especially Fallout New Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a different type of, of RPG, of course. It's not in pixel, mm -hmm. uh, but I like the the, the RPG mechanics. And most and mo more important, I like the idea. I liked the idea back then of telling a noir story with RPG mechanics instead of a noir story with uh, point and click uh, uh, mechanics. Uh, I don't know if this makes sense to you, mm -hmm. uh, but it f it felt natural for me at least. Uh, okay, I like these mechanics. This is something I want to do. Um, and I like this 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 genre. This uh, this is the atmosphere I want to do. Let's combine all those things together. Ne mm -hmm. Neither of, of these two things are, uh, was in uh, invention of uh, serial games invention. Mm -hmm. RPGs are uh, are old, as, as like the noir genre. But uh, combining those two. Uh, I guess that's the, 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 the new stuff. It's the combination of those two mm -hmm. uh, worlds. And with it's some it's something that I certainly find interesting since well the last the last tr the last game that we truly had that was that that was full on dedicated to film noir was of course um <laughs> LA noir. noir. Which as much as I like that game, it is st it one, it is still very much in the realm of uh, of a point and click adventure game, just with a controller instead of the point and clicking. And two, and two, well, the development of that game is a story in and of itself. Um, but even even within that, a lot of a lot of noir a lot of noir games and a lot of noir stories. Don't necessarily involve the involve the supernatural, and in your case, you're outright doing that. What with hi, what with him um, being vi what with him being visited by the dead, what with your protagonist being visited by by the yeah. dead in the, early on in the story. 
Um, and I'm cur I'm curious if um, I'm curious how the route was to in to integrating those supernatural aspects into into Picaminosa, or were, was there a very early um, run of it where it was fair, where it didn't have those elements? Uh, initially, initially, uh, we were we were not planning uh, that, uh, but even before we started the development, we already um, had this in mind because we um, at the time uh, we were discussing about having uh, a twist mm -hmm. to the story, uh, or else it would be uh, just a simply. Uh, just a simple the noir genre are not simply but I f you you understand what i i mean that is we don't want to tell a a, a, um, a noir uh, story uh, like all the, uh, the other uh, noir noir uh, stories we wanted uh, a twist behind it and mm -hmm. when this this uh, occurs the, the the this idea occurred to us it it, it seemed um, seemed um, um, cool enough for us to work with, and some time after that, uh, I, I saw a movie that uh, with Mickey Rourke, um, Angel Art, mm -hmm. with Lisa Bonet, uh, Mickey Rourke, uh, uh, and um, and it, it was also a story about a detective, not so noir, but noirish mm -hmm. uh, and it, uh, this story also had an occult um, um, team behind so uh, it was kind of okay they do uh, they 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 use the occult as well so maybe we're not so um, um, offset uh, I don't know if to say this in English look um, we are not way out of our purpose. Uh, mm -hmm. And with that, with that kind of, with that kind of, um, a pr with that. Now, it was it's it was made clear. It was made it's made very clear that um, the protagonist John so John Souza is not what you would call a hero. He 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 would be more in th more in the realm of of an a of an anti hero, which yeah. is fair is a fair is a fairly common motif within uh within film noir and doubly so when you have the whole um pri um some a a detector in the private sector who may or may not get get on with his for with his former bosses um was was that was na was going into that particular style of detective the fir the first thing that you guys tried to nail down Yes, in this case, yes. Uh, for instance, uh, we wanted the, the the occult as a twist mm -hmm. because we wanted to give something different. But on the other hand, the, some uh, um, features of the noir genre we had to maintain. Uh, like this, this was um, one uh, of those the features: the the anti-hero detective. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, La Femme Fatale the, was something we had to include uh, uh, on the, the on the story. Uh, the 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 type of uh, uh, speech, uh, crude humor, those kind of cliches. Those mm -hmm. we we um, we wanted since from uh, since from the the start of the. Of the the project. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when I first saw Picaminosa on Indiegogo, and one one particular one particular um, sentence stuck out to me, and I, and it's one that I'd like to explore if you don't mind. And that that is that the main goal is to have you living the story through the gameplay. What ex what exactly does that entail? It's. We we used to say a lot of, of times that we we wrote it, but you own the story. 
-hmm. you you can live it by your own pace make your own decisions uh, choose your own battles for for instance in pecaminosa there's um, two uh, t different paths that once you fight uh, with a boss on paths mm -hmm. a the boss from the path b will be uh, forever uh, extinct uh, so you will you can leave it uh, from different uh, ways mm -hmm. um, your own de decisions will make you live or experience the game differently uh, from another uh, another player for for uh, another example is the life system we use uh, life stands for luck intelligence force and uh, endurance mm -hmm. and if you decide to go um, to to have a, a a build based on life or it's completely uh, a life sorry uh, on um, luck it's completely indif uh, different than uh, uh, playing with a build uh, focused on on force mm -hmm. uh, or in or uh, in intelligence the the, the speeches the dialogues uh, you will have access to uh, f from some NPCs will be different. Uh, uh, even the way you fight will be different. With luck, you can kill a boss, in a boss, not, not a boss, not a boss, but a minor uh, enemy, almost, almost an instant death with a critical hit, mm -hmm. because you're lucky. On the other hand, on the other hand, with with force. Uh, you can you can have uh, uh, a critical hit, but you can you have more HP uh, and you can make more damage uh, without critical hits, for example. Mm -hmm. So you leave it the, you leave it your, your way. That's what we intend to do with that uh, to say with that uh, sentence. Mm -hmm. And since you, since you brought it up, let's talk about the life system, which. Um, already, already was going to draw my attention due to due to my um, fondness for acronyms. Um, huh? Would it? I don't think it would be. I don't think it would be um, off off course of off course of me to say that one of the chief inspirations for the life system is the special Specials. system that's been used in Fallout. Um, and to the, to that end. I'd be I'd be curious I'm curious um what e what each component of the, of the life system do, what life system would do and what a um what a what a build that leans that leans towards that particular stat more than others would be like and I'll start I'll start with luck okay luck will increase your um or luck, <laughs> uh, you will get the chance to get critical, more critical hits. Mm -hmm. uh, you even get the chance to uh, um, to evade some uh, attacks, and will increase the the probability probability to to find um, to find um, uh, loot. Mm -hmm. Oh, and when you when you say a chance to dodge, are we t are we talking? Are we talking like the like the random chance to do, to to dodge and to dodge and say dodge builds in payday? Uh, yes, it's it's a, a automatical miss for the, mm -hmm. the the enemy because you, we have the dash mechanic. Mm -hmm. You can dash to escape some attacks uh, and even to move faster mm -hmm. from one point to the other. The luck uh, affects. Uh, um, automatically, mm -hmm. like Phantom Assassin on Dota, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. Um, now next would be intelligence. Okay, Intelligi int intelligence uh, uh, allows you to, um, for example, uh, uh, you have dialogues options. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 easiest. Uh, or the faster dialogue choices will get with intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, the faster, in order to achieve the the goals, you will have with intelligence, especially with the um, Laswari, that's the final chapter of Caminosa. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but also uh, it improves your aiming since you can uh, shoot uh, longer uh, distances. Mm -hmm. um, now the, thir the third in this quartet would be force. Force. Force allows you to use the force like Luke Skywalker. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, for force, uh, actually, force is uh, two attributes. We use. Um, uh, I I um, I use the term uh, force instead of strength, for example, mm -hmm. because I wanted to create the the word uh, life with mm -hmm. this uh, with this uh, four attributes but force uh, will increase your hp mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we will increase your damage uh, uh, as well mm -hmm. initially uh, it was um, uh, we uh, intended to have uh, a weight system of the amounts of it items you can uh, carry mm -hmm. uh, but we but uh, we uh, eventually we we decided to drop this this uh, this idea but force w eventually w will it affect the this the carrying capacity of the player mm -hmm. and the last one is endurance Basically, en endurance is uh, the the attribute that uh, manages uh, or or uh, or is related to stamina. Mm -hmm. um, with endurance, you you can uh, shoot faster, mm -hmm. walk faster. You can regenerate your stamina bar faster after you mm -hmm. dash. Uh, but one of uh, most of the people don't. I have this in mind, but one of the most important things with endurance is that endurance reduces the the the, the perks uh, cooldown. Mm -hmm. By the way, per, you have four perks, and all the four perks are related with uh, those four uh, attributes. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, if you um, if you spend some points on luck and intelligence. Mm -hmm. At least seven uh, each. Uh, you can unlock Indiana John. Mm -hmm. Indiana John will give you an extra um, uh, probability to to find uh, uh, loot. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you spend your points on, let's say. Uh, endurance and luck you will uh, unlock a perk an active perk this one you have you you need to active mm -hmm. there is valentine massacre you you have unlimited uh, speed and bullets for a short period of time so you can just shoot everything uh, it's a, a rampage mode basically mm -hmm. all now, the perks okay oh, I, I was saying all the perks are related with the the with different attributes, for example, this this kind of rampage thing uh, is related with uh, endurance and luck. In Donna John, with luck and uh, and um, intelligence. What's up, Doc? Mm -hmm. With uh, uh, force and endurance. That you you with this this is a, pass a passive perk uh, which allows you, the player to be uh, immune to all debuffs basically mm -hmm. so you are, again the way you decide to play the game you can have different um, very different uh, perks or 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 stats mm -hmm. now with with that with that particular thing thing in mind i'm get i'm guessing i'm guessing that um within within perks there's a, there's a mix of Pa of passive ones and a and active ones. Sorry, I'm I'm assuming that I'm assuming that when it comes to when it comes to the perks that one unlocks, there's 
that it that as you progress, you're pro you're going to be ha depending on how you level up life, you're going to have a mix of passive and active perks. Yes, exactly. You have two actives and two uh, passives uh, mm -hmm. perks. You can have uh, only one of each, one active and one uh, uh, passive. You can't mm -hmm. have uh, the two uh, because they are in different uh, positions on on the on the charts. Mm -hmm. So you decide to uh, to upgrade the 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 I don't know to, to say this uh, the top uh, mm -hmm. of the charts automatically mm -hmm. you can evolve the bottom of the of the chart and mm -hmm. one of the perks are, uh, is is up and the other one is down so you add you you need to to make your decision early on basically mm -hmm. now from what I, from what i recall um up until up until Pekam, um your your studio serial games had mostly done um ed, educational slash entertainment style um pro, style projects um and go going from going from that to to some to something like this is certain is certainly quite a leap um what i'm curious about in that regard is what's what's some of the early lessons that you and that you ended up learning uh, make making the making the transfer from one to the other um you you're referring to what what i've learned after doing this transition or yeah. prior um okay, i'd say i'd say a little i'd say learning that things learned prior and things learned um things learned after okay uh prior uh, i would say that's uh we early on since we uh, we uh, we worked with schools and science centers mm -hmm. municipalities um we we cultivated the, um on uh, on on the team the, the the sense of okay we have a limited time to do uh, a limited job mm -hmm. uh, because most of in the uh, studios they uh, they uh, they work on games for uh, several years some of them never finished the their game mm -hmm. uh, we create we had this experience of okay uh, we have four months six months to to create uh, okay a smaller game that's true but still we had a start and a finish mm -hmm. um, so this is very important believe me or not but this is finishing a game it's something that's not that easy mm -hmm. i used to 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 give lectures once in a while um and one of my the favorites i i uh, i uh, i had i give uh, some some years ago was the the, the title of the, of this lecture was uh, creating a game or developing a game is easy finishing it it's the it's art uh -huh. in portuguese sounds better <laughs> uh but this this uh can, basically it's it's easy to start a game and to develop a game but finishing it and okay this is the our game it's what do we intend to do it from the start no but okay but at least we finish it and we are publishing it Mm -hmm. We will not spend the rest of our lives trying to make something that will never be a game because we are constantly doing s some uh, new stuff and new stuff. Okay, I don't like this anymore. Let's try this. No. Okay, I don't like this, but okay, I've learned the next game I will not do this. But for now, we need to finish it. We need to, to deliver it. And this uh, feeling, uh, this... Uh, this um, uh, notion of, of of time and conclusion mm -hmm. we we had it prior when we started with educational uh, games mm -hmm. after that uh, what we learned with Pekaminosa basically it's is more about the the um, the online community uh, mm -hmm. because in the past when we created the game we created the, basically we created the game for one client or for one player Mm -hmm. uh, this player, this client, 
will use the, this this game for all the students but uh, the one that requires the the game for from us is just a school for example we mm -hmm. work with a school with Pecaminosa we talk uh, daily uh, we interact with uh, hundreds of people uh, around the world mm -hmm. um, we did a crowdfunding campaign uh, we attract pe uh, people from all uh, all over the, the the world it's a different scale for us uh, to talk with this all this the, the this these guys uh, and girls mm -hmm. um, and the 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 notion the the importance of maintaining a community it's very important and this is was something that we were not used to it uh, before it's a completely new world in the, in this in this matter mm -hmm. now <clears throat> obviously when establishing the atmosphere of an of a noir game the soundtrack the soundtrack is very important you and you already mentioned um <coughs> sorry being a hu being a huge fan of j of jazz um so with that with that in mind how did how did you how did you first meet up and get and and talk um and i'm get i'm i apologize because i know i'm gonna but i know i'm gonna butcher pronunciation again <laughs> um Cristóvão, um, Ferreira. Okay. Um, Cristóvão. Cristóvão. Yeah, you did a good job, Cristóvão. Yeah, I'm. I'm used to because of, because of some other stuff that I cover. I'm used to dealing with individual syllables. So, um, phonetics that ca phonetics that kind of blend into each other throws is always going to throw me off. Um. But how did how did you end up how did you end up meeting meeting him and get and getting him to ha to help out on the um, so on the soundtrack end of things. Okay, actually, that was easy. One of the easiest parts of all these uh, projects because I'm a jazz drummer myself, mm -hmm. and and I used to play with Cristóvão. Uh, I'm still playing with Cristóvão, by the way. <laughs> uh, and uh, back then, uh, I had several local musicians in mind to create the the soundtrack but since Cristóvão is uh, is more like my age uh, mm -hmm. usually the jazz players are old i'm not so young but i'm not also that old so i guess i uh, working with a younger guy would be easier to explain how a game uh, would uh, work oh, oh sorry how the music would work on a game uh, context Mm -hmm. uh, besides, Cristóvão um, uh, is a, a composer and piano player, but he, but he's also um, he also has a engineer a musical engineering degree, so mm -hmm. he can not only compose and play, but also record and produce all the songs uh, for Pecaminosa. So instead of having a composer and another guy who will uh, would uh, record the those uh, that soundtrack. I decided to have uh, uh, all those guys in uh, all in one, basically. Mm -hmm. And with now getting getting back into getting back into the flow of the flow of the game. Um, given the given the motif of the of the core story, obvi obviously. Um, boss design is a boss design is a must, which is some which is something that's been getting a lot of examination over the last few years. Um, when it came to when it came to designing when it came to designing bosses, there's two questions that I have. One, do you have it set up where they are where where they are the um, the tr the endpoints of gi of given chapters, and two. Is our boss encounters more more about re more about um, recognizing and countering their patterns? I guess it's both mm -hmm. because um, the importance 
the, the importance of, of boss fights in Pecaminosa um, goes 20 years back, more than 20 years back, again to my Mega Drive mm -hmm. uh, periods at, at, uh, at the 90s, early 90s. Uh, who, that back then bosses had a special meaning on the game. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that today they don't, but back back then it was finishing uh, or passing a boss uh, was something like passing, uh, graduating yourself, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, it was way harder. Uh, there was not. Uh, uh, it, it was a time before YouTube when you can check how they used to to pass to defeat the the boss, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, since the start of Pokemonosa, our intention was to have boss fights um, like those of of uh, of the of the classics, um, mm -hmm. and having this uh, having this it's uh, it is not also uh, uh, the uh, like you said, uh, uh, um, the closure of a chapter, it makes sense because we are telling a story. Pokemonosa is basically a, a detective story. Mm -hmm. But also, we we wanted, we intended to create those bosses with that particular uh, patterns that you can decipher and with different stages. The first stage, the boss is easier, but then it can have a special attack. Mm -hmm. uh, those kind of features that was very typical uh, back in the in the 90s for Mega Drive or even for Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. So I guess it, the, the, the right answer is both. Yeah. Now with with that with that particular thing in mind, I I do rec um I do recall at one at one point in one of the updates during the Indie, during the during the Indiegogo of um, tips being pl placed because there there were some remarks that the game was too, that the game was too difficult. Um, what has has difficulty balancing been been a thing that's that's been that's been tossed around since you, for when it comes to the game's development? Uh, let me say if I under understand you. you're saying if it, it is difficult for us to the balance the. Um, I'm more, um, I'm more, cu I'm more curious if there, if there were stumbling blocks when it came to balancing difficulty. Okay, uh, I, I guess, uh, and it's inevitable, uh, because since we are the, the developers, we know everything, uh, about the game, so we know how to specifically defeat in the most efficient way a boss mm -hmm. so even for us if we we, uh, we know we find it easy because we actually know how to to make it easy for mm -hmm. the common player maybe and when i'm saying maybe it's probably it's not that easy and our main uh, uh, difficulty here in the process was to try to understand which was okay easy for us and accessible for the 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 players mm -hmm. uh, or when it was easy for us but way still way to order for the 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 players uh, mm -hmm. it was this was a tricky uh, part indeed on, on all this this um, development mm -hmm. Now, with with that with that particular thing with that particular thing in mind, um, now, I had I had al I had also I had also be remi be remiss if I did if I didn't if I didn't point out um, the the um, the fact that the fact that. In the in the initial Indiegogo, and I'm not I'm not sure if the, I'm not sure if this is go, if this has gone all the way yet. Um, you had you had stated wanting to put the thing on on Windows, Mac, Linux, and the Switch. Um, how e how easy or difficult has it been has it been 
to tr to transfer what you had onto onto the um, development kit for the Nintendo Switch. Actually, um, I must say it was it was um, kind of easy. We we did we did it uh, pretty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, it was our first time porting a game for Switch, but we managed to do it v very smoothly. Uh, for, I can give you an example. We are not the ones. Uh, we don't have the responsibility to port it for Xbox and PlayStation, and we are still waiting for the Xbox and PlayStation ports. But for Nintendo Switch, which was the one that, uh, besides computer, uh, which was the one uh, that was uh, our responsibility, uh, we made it uh, in time and we made it with not, not with no major issues. Uh, it was actually a very good experience doing that for the first time, uh, and it was very smoothly, actually. Mm -hmm. The same goes for Windows to Linux and uh, and Mac OS. Mm -hmm. And with with that with all, with all of that in with all of that in mind, um, one f one. One capstone that I did that I did want to, I did I I did want to cover was, uh was the ep was the epilogue expansion that you get that, that you guys had, that you guys had done and I I refer to it as as an expansion and not and not um, DLC because it basically feels to me it the way I look at it is it feels like a extra episode that I might see in an old FPS instead. Instead of the instead of what a lot of people think of when they think of DLC, um, with obviously I can't obviously I'm not going to go into story details with it, but with La Soire, um, was that something that you had you had a bit of the you had a bit of the notes for um, near the tail end of near the tail end of development, but you didn't have. But it wasn't completely finished by the time the by the time it was time to go gold, or was there a different route? Uh, it was nothing we we decided because we didn't have time. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, from the start we had the idea of a, of having an extra. At the time, uh, right now we avoid to use like you the term DLC because I don't think it's the most proper mm -hmm. in this case. So we we've avoid to use the term DLC. But on the beginning, we intended to create Pokemonoza Plus a DLC. Mm -hmm. uh, when we started the development and since the story has this occult twist, but in the... I don't know if I can say this because it, it can ruin uh, the game for some players. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Um, on the, the early game when the um, Sousa, uh receives his quest from the, the Charlie to Angels mm -hmm. um, he thinks that he's going after his, uh, his partner mm -hmm. okay the story goes the other way that's okay and after that we decide okay the story with the Sousa, uh the former uh, Sousa, uh so as a former partner, okay, uh -huh. um, we should wrap this up and finish this as well. So instead of launching uh, uh, another type of, of DLC, uh, we decided to uh, reserve this this uh, this um, this chapter early on for telling this story. Uh -huh. For those who who, who, who got Kaminoza even before. We launched La Soiree. Uh, they can actually take cool at the time. Actually, uh, see four chapters on 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 the game uh, on the game on Cobinosa. Mm -hmm. uh, some people uh, even came to us asking, "How do we? How do we? How can I unlock the the fourth chapter?" We we decided to leave it there as mm -hmm. a more as a reminder uh, uh, that of things that would come uh, then uh, okay let's finish the game and launch it 
without okay. without this it's more like uh, uh, okay we will do this we don't know when but let's launch it the game um, and after that we will uh, we will provide this um, this expansion uh, for the players mm -hmm. uh, and, and besides besides that we actually finished the last soirée before we launched Caminosa mm -hmm. because we finished Caminosa on September October 2020 and the mm -hmm. game was only launched on May so in the meantime we we developed the uh, last soirée so we could uh, actually uh, released at the same time mm -hmm. and with a, and it's and I I certainly appreciate I certainly appreciate bo um, both 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 part both parts for sure for sure as well as the as well as the the um, similar issue that you you and I have regarding the term DLC uh, but with all with all that said I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way up to my temple and enjoy the madness at play here. Oh, uh, I appreciated the invitation. It was a very uh, smooth conversation. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return to the temple, whether it's to for, whether it's to further dis further cover um, um, Picaminosa or or even to just talk about jazz. The door is always open. Thank As you. I often say around here, <laughs> drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And I appreciate that. <laughs> and, of, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then... On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>